Hello, Vince Campy here. Now we're going to do a little replace the sky situation. This is one way to do it. And so um, let's giddy up. Okay. So I'm going to go over to these two photos I have opened up. There's a picture of the Disney Hall, downtown Los Angeles. And um, the reason I'm using this one in particular is because it's real, real easy because all, there's all sharp edges around here. And so making the selections will be, uh, will be pretty simple. And then I have another sky that I've opened. And I'm going to put that in instead of this guy that's on there. Okay, so I'm clicking on the Disney Hall. Now I want to get that image on top of the other one. There's two ways of doing that. We can um, go to Select All, which is Command A. And we'll select this picture. And then we can Command C or Edit Copy. Now we've copied it. Now we just click on the other tab of the other picture we have open. And now you can Command V or Edit Paste. Bam, puts it right in there. Okay, that's one way to do it. Another way is if you just go to the Disney Hall picture, um, all you have to do is click, hold, and drag. See, it's got a hold of it there. Over on top of the tab there, and it switches to that picture. And you go down and hold shift and let go, and it centers it right on that image. So those are two ways of getting these images together. Now, we, uh, we have this layer selected here, the top layer. And that's what we're going to use the um, quick selection tool on that. You have that, and we have it set to add to. Be right there, add to selection. So then when we click a few times, it'll continue to add to the selection. But what we're going to do is we're going to go over the picture, and we're going to drag straight down, and it'll select pixels that are similar to the ones we drag on. So click, hold, and drag down, and bada bing, bada boom. It selected everything quite nicely. Okay, we've got the top there, the edge there. Let's see. Okay, got everything. Got a little bit extra on the building here. That's no problem. So we're going to um, go ahead and work on that. It's not going to take much work, but we're going to do that. I'm going to hit Command-0 so that it fits in there. Now, what we're going to do is right above the quick selection, we're going to click and hold and go to the polygonal lasso tool. Right here, the polygonal lasso tool. And that's going to give us straight lines. And so uh, that'll be a lovely thing. And what we want to do is we want to subtract from the selection because the sky is selected and we want just the building. So we're going to subtract from the selection. Now, with this polygonal lasso tool, I'm going to do it in a couple of swipes. So you click right here in the top corner. Just click once, boom, clicked. And see now it attaches to there and it's going to give us straight lines, which is going to be nice and easy for this building. So now I'm going to go down to the back of the building here. That's about where the back is. So I'm going to click once. See it attaches. Each time you click, it'll attach. If you accidentally click a couple times, oh no, oh no, just hit the delete key and it'll delete each one of those. Um, uh, little deals there. Okay, one of those anchor points. So now we're going to go down to right about here. And I'm going to just click once there. And then for this, we're going to grab that top section first. So you can click anywhere in here. So you just click. It attaches. Then we're going to go up and meet our little uh, spot at the beginning. And as soon as you go and see around here, then you go over the beginning spot, it gives you that little circle, and it's going to um, enclose it. So click once, and now I included that whole part in the selection. So we're going to go down here and get this part now. So I'm going to click right here once, and then I'm just going to drag this all the way down there, and then go below the where the uh, selection stopped. Go down there and click once. Attaches. And just click anywhere in here. You don't have to worry about it too much. I'm going to click there. Going up. I'm going to click here. And then go to meet 
where we started. And it gives you that circle, then click once more, and now it uh, enclosed all that. I have a little extra right there, so I'm just going to click, 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 and click. There we go. Now we just got that. So, okay, so now we have that selected. All we have to do is get the back of this building here, and we are in good shape. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit, Command Plus. Now, to get this little sliver here, all you have to do is click in this corner. See, it attaches. You go into the back corner there and just click once. And now follow the building down. I'm going to go all the way down to underneath where um, the selection is or the marching ants are. I'm going to click down there. Now, again, we don't have to worry about it on the inside. So I'm just going to click, go up here, click, and then go. And then as soon as I'm over the other, the beginning, it gives you that zero like we talked about and click. And now all of this is included. You have all that. That's good. We don't have to worry about too, too, too specific. So command zero. So now we have the buildings or the sky nicely selected. But we need the building selected. What? That is crazy talk. Okay, I think we have an answer. We're going to inverse this. So we inverse this. You just go to select, inverse. And now the buildings are selected. So now it's selected everything the opposite of what was selected. So now we have our building selected. Now we're in good shape. So now we can fine tune this selection. We're going to go right here to where it says select and mask. I'm going to click on that. It's going to open up a big dialog box. This is referred to as a dialog box. It's made a pretty good selection there. Okay, there's not too much uh, bright sky. If you don't see it with the over black like that, that would be on the view menu over here. It might be something like that or that or that. This is uh, what masks look like. They're red. On black looks really good. Um, on white, but if you have light edges, you won't see them and you want to see that. Black and white doesn't really give you the information we need. On layers, why don't you try that? Try on layers. So then you can really see what it's going to look like. So you click on layers and um, yeah. Okay, so I'm looking around the edges. And there's a little bit of brightness or a little blue on those edges. That's the sky that was there. So what we're going to do is we don't really need smoothing too much because it's very uh, basic. I'll just put a couple pixels of smoothing. Feathering over here, usually what you like to do is if even if it's a hard edge like that, you want a little bit of a feather. So a little usually under one pixel so or a pixel or under. That just rounds the edge just the tiniest bit and it'll make it look a little a uh, little more realistic because using nothing in life is, is razor uh, sharp. So now see how you see a little bit of the blue there. We're going to shift the edge. OK, if I shift it to the right. You see a little bit more of the blue edge there. So what we're going to do is we're going to um, shift it in a little bit. And then looking at that, there's a little bit, um, a little bit of that blue showing. It's even at the top of the building there. There's a little bit of the blue showing. So I'm going to shift that edge in a little bit more. Let's see, that's a little bit better. And just looking around the edge to make sure it's looking good, maybe a little bit more. Yeah, I think that's kind of doing the trick. Okay, that's looking good. Okay, looking around the edges. Okay, so now, got this adjusted, and we're going to um, scroll down a little bit here, and you go to Output Settings, down here. Might be curled up like that, but you just hit this little twisty, and it will open up. And what the, there's other stuff. So going down, we want to output to, where it says that, layer mask. 
We're going to put a mask on that layer, layer mask, and um, that's what we need. So then just hit OK. So now this looks very much like um, like it did in the window there. So you, so now you have this layer mask. Uh, if you need to change it, you can paint black or white on it to adjust it. But it's looking pretty good right now. And hit Command S because it's good to hit that. Now I'm gonna try something a little wacky. Oh yeah, you heard me. I'm gonna get a little bit wacky. I'm gonna try to make this a little surreal. So I just went up. And I got the move tool. I made sure auto select and show transform controls are on so I can see these. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom out a tiny bit. So command minus. I'm going to flip the sky upside down. I mean, this looks nice. It's like, oh, that's pretty. But let's get a little surreal. Whoops. OK, I'm on the wrong layer. So I want to hit the checkbox and then Command Z, Control Z on Windows to turn that around. I had the wrong layer selected. So now I need to click on this first layer. And then I go over the corner and it gives me that little um, round uh, cursor thing there. So now I'm just going to spin the sky upside down. So this is now going to become more of a surreal scene where this doesn't really exist. Now, I can move this around a little bit because um, the buildings start right there. So I can go and maybe have it sort of like that. Or I can move it all the way up and it doesn't look as surreal when you don't see the land. But there it's like, oh my gosh, land. So we have mountains on top. Now, so I'm going to go ahead and click this little checkbox. Just to make it look a little like what you know you want you, sometimes you like your pictures to look a little what okay now i'm gonna hit command s to save now what's going to really sell this is uh, okay i did pick a sky that had the same tonality as the buildings because it's um it has a, the reds in them and this guy is an evening sky but what you want to do to kind of tie it together is you go down here to the uh, adjustment layers, click on there, and go up and 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 up. Photo filter. If you have this layer selected, then the photo filter will go on top, and it comes in with a warm tone. Okay, and so now this just gives the whole image the same color tone, and you don't notice it too much on this one because it already had the same tone. But if they were different colors, then this would definitely help it out. If you want, you can experiment with what other uh, tonalities do. The cooling filter. We know warm and cool. Uh, cool colors look more like ice and coldness. Warm colors look more like fire. Ooh, fire. See that red? That red doesn't look too bad. You can try a few of these. Orange is basically what we had. But I'm just going to go with the uh, default warming filter 85 there because it looks lovely. And so now, OK, these all now have a similar tint to them. So um, it, uh, it's going to be cool. So now that's how we replace the sky. So for my classes, we can put some text on there. We're going to go to text tool. You're going to click here and you're going to put replace sky. And this falls in the, into the digital imaging category, but um, we're going to put that there. So now I can put it down on this side. I get a nice color for the text. I can click on that, I have that selected. Click on this. I'm going to go over and see how this orange looks up there. Oh, hello, that's much better. Maybe that orange. Yeah, that orange looks pretty good. Okay. So then just hit OK. Maybe I'll move this down a little bit more so you can actually read it. There we go. And now we're going to put our signature on there. So text tool. 
and put your name on. Okay, I'm gonna hit that and grab the move tool. That's selected. So now I'm just gonna grab that signature font that I've been using that I kind of like. And I'll just move that over there. Maybe make it a little bigger. Put on a checkbox. Maybe make the replace sky a little smaller. Use drag from the corner. So they're about the same length. And that's a good design kind of a thing. Click the checkbox there. And let's see. So this is, I usually like to have it about the same distance from the side as from the bottom. Let me select these two layers over here in the layers panel. It'll be easier to select them there. So click on there, shift click there. Now let me drag them over here and see how they look. How about over here? Oh, there we go. I'm feeling that, bro. You know when you're feeling it. Okay, so I can do that, move that up a little bit. And so, okay, still not the same distance. So now I'll just use the arrow keys to nudge it down. Nudge it over. You know, nudge. Okay, there we go. Hitting Command S. So that's the, that's the project. We would just replace the sky. If we want this to blend in a little bit more, maybe I will click that word, replace the sky. Just lower the opacity a little bit. So it just kind of goes back. It doesn't grab your attention so much. About 80% opacity on that layer. And yeah, that actually works pretty good. Okay, Command S. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to take a screenshot. Oh yeah, again, you heard me. Take a screenshot of this interface here. So that's Shift, Command 4 which gives you that little crosshair. Now we're gonna hit uh, the space bar. Now it turns into a little camera and it'll take a picture of the entire um, uh, window that you have open. So you just click on that, boom, okay. And let's see, yes, let's save a print and web version. So I'm gonna go save as File, save as, and what you're going to do is uh, we're going to name it um, MAW, Media Arts Wheel, replace Sky RS, your last name. And we've already saved the PSD. That's always important to save that. And then now for this um, print version, oh yeah, we got to put print after it. What was I thinking? Oh my gosh, no. Oh yeah, okay. So to change the format, we can't just change the extension. We have to reformat so or change the format. Now it'll be a JPEG. That's what we want to um, use for printing or possible printing. In your last name folder and hit save. So that's our print JPEG. Remember, we always have this um, at maximum 12. Hit OK. Now we're going to save our web version, which is file, export, save for web legacy. That's the save for web legacy. So file, export, save for web legacy. And we're going to make sure we have two up right here. And over here, we've got to make this sure this is JPEG. That's what we're going to save it as very common web format quality 100 and then we're going to do the at this moment in time instagram likes 1080 so we're going to make the largest number 1080 so 56 37 56 is the largest number so 1080 then i hit the tab key it'll automatically change the width or the height, whichever. Um, on this case, probably the width. So, um, so it does that because the aspect ratio is locked. Okay, we have this. Now all we have to do is hit save. And 
um, after the your last name, type in web. So this is the web version. It'll go save right into that folder. Hit save. And you've got it down. Da -da! Super great. Woo! So it's replacing the sky. Real simple way to do it. Now it gets a little more complex if it's uh, if you have a tree on the horizon or something like that. But for right now, this is a good intro to that. Cool. All right. Uh, so have a lovely day, and I'll see you on the. Ooh, I'll see you on the flip side. Not sure what that means. Maybe see you tomorrow or some other day. Either way, have a great uh, day, and uh, we'll take care. Bye bye.